every year now, in urban and rural communities across the country, there are more and more schools that are accomplishing similar results. 20 years ago, no one would have believed this would be true, that we would have dozens, hundreds of whole schools here in DC and in New York, in Newark and Philadelphia and Baltimore, and Los Angeles and Oakland and San Jose, in the Mississippi Delta and the Rio Grande Valley, and Eastern North Carolina and many, many other places in between. We know what these schools are doing differently, and once again, we've learned that there is nothing elusive about it. North Star's leader, Teach for America alumna Julie Jackson, has embraced a different mandate than most of our public schools embrace. Like Megan, she aims not simply to put learning opportunities in front of students, but rather to put them on a different path than their socioeconomic background would predict. And she puts forth the same kind of extraordinary effort and uses the same strategies in reaching that goal that it takes to attain very ambitious outcomes in any endeavor. She obsesses over recruiting and developing a strong team of teachers. She builds a powerful culture to invest and align the kids and the families and the staff in the same mission. She manages aggressively, ensures continuous improvement, and again, does whatever it takes, expanding the school's time and services as necessary to meet the end goal. Today, we know something we didn't know 20 years ago. We know we can provide children facing the extra challenges of poverty with an education that is transformational. As a nation, it is of course true that we should do everything we can to reduce the challenges of poverty. And in fact, mitigating poverty was one critical way to bring us closer to our vision. But now we also know that we don't need to wait to eliminate poverty to ensure that all of our nation's children have access to the kind of education that will ultimately give them a way out of poverty. So today, we're asking a different question. We aren't asking whether we can make a difference through education. Instead, the question is, how can we ensure that all children have access to an education that unlocks their full potential? Even to that question, we have seen amazing progress in the last few years. Five years ago, if we had asked our most informed educators and policy leaders to agree on a list of the hardest to change school systems in America, certainly we would have had a big debate, but certainly we would have agreed that New Orleans and Washington, D.C. were near the top of the list. Today, in some significant part because of the inspiring efforts of many alumni, many folks in this room, these are two of the fastest improving school systems in America. for their success are not elusive. Where school systems are changing in meaningful ways, their leaders are once again deeply committed to changing lives. They know that incremental change is not enough, and they act on an understanding that success is not elusive. They focus on attracting and developing and empowering school-based leadership and teachers to do whatever it takes to attain transformational results. The successes in New Orleans and DC and that of other improving systems like New York City's, systems that 10 years ago were thought impossible to move, should fuel our collective sense of possibility. On top of all this, today we are witnessing unprecedented levels of policy change at the district, state, and federal level to act on the lessons of high-performing schools and changing school systems. We have state laws, like the one passed recently in Colorado, thanks to alumnus Michael Johnston. And the many who supported him in the effort. 
which is foundational in enabling districts to develop exceptional teachers and principals and to empower them to attain results. What we've learned about transformational education and how to replicate it, the progress we've made in growing the number of transformational schools, the systems and policies that are changing, this is stunning progress for two decades. And yet, the reality is that we have not yet made a meaningful difference against the problem we're addressing in an aggregate sense. Still, in the aggregate, the achievement gaps in our nation remain the same as they were 20 years ago. To realize our vision, we will need to build on all that's been learned, the incredible progress that's been made to dramatically increase the pace of change. What will it take to do this? I have my opinions, but today I'm going to leave it to you all and our panelists to figure this out. But I am going to share one observation. Wherever we see change that is transformational for students, that has a meaningful, increment, not an incremental, but a meaningful impact on their academic and life trajectories, wherever we see it, we see transformational leadership. If we truly center ourselves in the lessons of the last 20 years, we will see no way around that fact. Whether at the classroom level, or the school level, or the system level, or the policy level, the kind of change we need rests on people who know and believe what Megan Brousseau and Julie Jackson know and believe, who deeply believe in their students, who understand what it takes to set them up for success and who are willing to step up and lead to ensure they fulfill their true potential. Wherever we see transformational change in education, there are individuals who have the conviction, insight, experience, and determination that comes most often from having taught successfully in urban and rural communities. Ultimately, attaining the change we need is going to require transformational leadership at every level, inside our classrooms, at the school level, and at the system level, in our communities, in our unions, at every level of policy, and in the professional sectors that influence our policy makers. Anything less buys us incremental change at best. And in the face of a problem, of the magnitude and consequences of the one we're addressing, one where whole communities put more children into prison than into college, there is only one morally acceptable option. Incremental change is not enough. We need transformational change. that Teach for America and our supporters and our alumni have a special responsibility. For Teach for America, we must continue to grow. We must become more racially and economically diverse to increase our success in the short run and to have any chance at success in the long run. We must increase the impact of our core members so that they become a force of transformational teachers for their students and in the process gain the foundational experience necessary for effective long-term leadership and advocacy. And we must find ways to foster and support and accelerate the leadership of our alumni in areas that we know are pressing and critical to the broader effort. For you in this room who are alumni, or soon to be, we must depend on you to maximize the impact you personally have in moving all of us toward our shared vision. You and the other successful teachers and former teachers in our schools and communities are better equipped than anyone 
to take us forward. Today, thanks to what we've learned over the last two decades, we have an unprecedented opportunity in the history of our nation. If we make the most of it, the students who overcome poverty to realize their full potential will grow up to become some of the most inspiring leaders our nation has ever known. Leaders who have the strength of character that comes from succeeding in the face of extraordinary challenges and who have the kind of education that will enable them to solve the other problems we face as a society. We can enable children in urban and rural schools to make history. The question is simply whether we will. And we in this room, and the thousands of others who couldn't be here, can work alongside many others in urban and rural communities to determine the answer to that question. It really is up to us. Thank you. Please welcome the CEO.